Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and happy Easter. Is it Easter? I... It's hard to tell this year. <laughs> Look, I know that um, for a lot of you, including myself, Easter is just not right this year. And, you know, uh, I look, I'm a very traditional person. I look forward to uh, things happening the exact same way every year. But obviously, this year um, is going to have to be an exception. Um, you see, usually on Easter Sunday, we uh, have our special uh, um, um, outside service at church. And we come home, and then we go to my uh, aunt's house for... Uh, for a big family get-together for Easter, but neither of that is happening this year um, because of the uh, outbreak of the coronavirus. And it is sad. But you know what? There'll always be next year. Um, if we uh, don't shut down right now, if, if basically if we uh, don't skip Easter this year, we'll never have an Easter again. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to put it. And, you know, there are um, some things that are uh, still the same that I can still do this year to uh, keep my mind occupied and sane. And one of them is the annual Easter video that I put out for you guys here on YouTube. And this year is not going to be an exception. And al almost every year, except last year, the theme of my Easter videos is always something Gateway 2000 related. So, you know what? Let's just uh, go back to old times and take a look at a Gateway 2000 again. And currently, I only have one Gateway 2000 in my collection, but you know what? This is all I really need. This is my one of my pride and joys, the Gateway 2000 P590. Manufac manufactured, I believe, August the 4th of 1994. Of 1994. I uh, picked this up off eBay for a very expensive price. <laughs> I'm not going to say how much. Back in March of 2018. So I've had this a little over two years now. And isn't this a beauty? The reason I bought this computer is that it looks almost identical to my to the first computer I ever used, which was my Ants Gateway 2000, a P5100XL. And she still has that computer, and it still runs beautifully. And there's uh, something wrong with this Gateway 2000. A couple of little scuffs there. So the uh, specs of this computer, just to remind you, um, it has a 90 megahertz Intel Pentium socket 5. It has 32 megabytes of memory. Uh, it was originally 16. And in place of the original 1.2 gig hard drive is a CF card adapter with two CF cards, um, a 2 gig card for uh, Windows 3.1 and MS-DOS 6.22, and an 8 gigabyte CF card, which is in it right now, for Windows 95. And it has, also has a very fast 24-speed CD-ROM drive, which is not original to this system, obviously, but this one looks very similar to the one that was in my uh, Ants Gateway, so I decided to put that in here. And we've got a little floppy drive right here. Okay, I thought we'd take a brief look inside the computer. As you can see, this is a very, very tall computer. In fact, we may even measure it in a little bit, um, just to see, because I've never measured it before, and compare it to the height of the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. So, might be an interesting experiment we can do in a moment. But, anyway, I do have a CF card adapter in here, which is right there, the little red thing there. But, I also have a 15 gigabyte hard drive right here which I use for storage of game data and other documents. And of course, since this is a 15 gig drive, I can only use it when I'm using Windows 95. It's funny though, comparing the uh, size of the motherboard to the size of the case, the motherboard is tiny compared to the case. <laughs> I don't know if you can uh, 
see it on camera. There's our uh, processor, 90 megahertz. And there's the uh, video card, which is original to the system. That's a uh, ATI Mach 64 of 2 megs of memory, which is enormous for a computer from 1994. And there's the sound card, which is actually a uh, Packard Bell uh, sound card, one that you would find in a Packard Bell of the day. Reason there's a Packard Bell sound card in here was, well, there was originally a Sound Blaster Vibra 16 in here, but I had to take it out of here to use in my recent Carolina Flyer Junior project, and so I needed a sound card for this for this computer, so I just popped this one in, and you know what? It actually works really well in this computer. I'm very impressed. So it, I may actually keep it in here, to be honest with you. And... There's also a uh, 3COM uh, ISA network card under there, under the sound card. You can't really see it, but it's there. Trust me. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but right there is the uh, Dallas clock battery, which um, when I first got this computer caused me no end of trouble because this computer needs a working uh, CMOS battery in order for it to actually boot properly. And, but thankfully, um, with the help of a friend of mine here on YouTube, I was able to get that replaced with a socket. So that is uh, makes it a little bit future-proof now, and after two years of having that battery in there, it still works fine for now. Okay, got a tape measure, so let's see how tall this computer is. Been wondering for two years now. Let's see. Start from up here. Okay, so just a little over twenty. I'd say it's about twenty-two and a half inches. So we'll go ahead and lock it in place there, and we'll. Uh, move over here to the uh, Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT and compare. And this one is about 15 and a half inches. So I gotta do some math in my head. 15. So the Gateway 2000, let's see, it's 22 and a half, this is 15 and a half. Okay, if my calculations are correct, um, the uh, Packard Bell is 7 inches shorter than the Gateway, which is interesting because uh, my aunt's Gateway, I'm sure, is also 22 and a half inches, and this is uh, 15 and a half inches, so these are the two computers from my childhood, and it's amazing how these two computers, which are of sim similar vintage, were quite a bit different. Uh, and size wise so interesting little uh experiment there okay here's the desk that i have my gateway set up on uh, it's usually not this clean <laughs> i just uh move some stuff off for this video uh currently using this 15 inch gateway lcd monitor from uh 2000 2001 or so um, I'm hoping to someday get a matching Gateway 2000 CRT monitor for this system. That would be really, really nice. But this does for the time being. I also have these Altec Lansing multimedia speakers. I bought these at Goodwill a couple of years ago because these are identical to the speakers that would have come with this computer originally. So I had to get these and they sound really good. Using this uh, non-matching uh, Microsoft Multimedia Keyboard from the early 2000s. These uh, buttons do not work on here, but you know what? Keyboard works. Um, could care less. <laughs> uh, I would like to have a Gateway 2000 AnyKey keyboard for this computer, but I had to uh, sell mine a couple of years ago, and, and to get another one would cost way too much money. So uh, this will do for now. And a uh, Microsoft mouse, which we actually unboxed um, 
in a video for Easter in 2016. I'm using it on this computer now. And a Gateway 2000 mouse pad. Bought this off eBay a year or two ago. Okay, let's go ahead and fire it up. We're not going to be looking at Windows 3.1 right now just because I haven't gotten around to installing the uh, Packard Bell sound drivers yet. I just uh, haven't had time to do that. Oh, I forgot to put my uh, knickknacks back on the computer. I had to take them off when I took the uh, cover off. So there we go, that's better. Here we go. Posting. This computer has a very beefy sounding uh, PC speaker, which is really, really cool. Alright, go ahead and boot into Windows 95. Just remember, but we did see this computer somewhat recently uh, when I put OS2 on here, which worked surprisingly well on this computer. It was my first time using OS2, actually, because I couldn't even get it to work in a virtual machine. Okay, we're all booted up now, and this is the uh, Gateway 2000 10th Anniversary Wallpaper that was on my aunt's gateway. I think it still is, so I thought that would be appropriate for this system, even though it came out a year earlier. Let's go into our system properties, see what we got. 32 megs of RAM, that's good. There's our Mach 64, very, very powerful card for its time, I must say. Our 3Com Etherlink 3 ISA network card. And our Aztec Sound Galaxy Washington 16, a.k.a. the Packard Bell Sound Card. Which, again, <laughs> works really, really well on this computer. Everything uh, plays great with it, so I might just have to keep it in this computer. Because <laughs> I am really impressed with it. I've also got the Gateway 2000 edition of Microsoft Bob on here. This is the uh, version of Microsoft Bob that that was OEM to uh, Gateway. Apparently I haven't used it on here yet. I guess we can go ahead and set it up real quick. I'm going to type from a weird angle. Apparently, I live in Morph, Carolina. <laughs> and I am male. Last I checked. Okay, now it's going to uh, quote-unquote fetch my uh, programs, uh, Windows and MS-DOS programs. Probably just on Drive C. I do have a Drive D on here. But I doubt it's going to scan it. Oh, don't need a tour. Been using this since 2005. Yes, I was late to the Microsoft Bob game. <laughs> Welcome to the Bob home, Billy. Well, thank you. Let's change the destination to uh, Billy's Contemporary Study for this door. It's a room just for you, Billy. Oh, isn't that nice? 
You know, just like Packer Bell Navigator, uh, Microsoft Bob doesn't have a uh, bathroom. I am hoping that they uh, are not using an outhouse or a uh, chamber pot or anything. <laughs> that would be bad. Well, be unsanitary at least. Get rid of that stuff. And let's add a little computer to our desk, shall we? Can't do anything with it other than look at it, but with this being the uh, gateway uh, version of Microsoft Bob, we can add a Gateway 2000! Look, it's a gateway. Again, you can't do anything with it, but it's a Gateway 2000. It's, it looks like a uh, full desktop model because it has the uh, sideways, the vertical floppy drive, I mean. But that is really neat. Okay, let's play a couple of games, and I was thinking, uh, why not have a miniature back-to-back uh, -back marathon of Sierra games? Starting with uh, 3D Ultra Pinball, which some, for some reason is using the Jazz Jackrabbit logo. <laughs> Did that fix it? Nope. Tell you, Windows 9X is a bit finicky when it comes to uh, shortcut icons. Now, the only problem with 3D Ultra Pinball is that it doesn't play well in 640x480 when you're using Windows 95B. On RTM and A, it runs just fine in 640x480, but in 95B, the graphics are all glitched out unless you um, go to uh, 800x600. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we can start up Ultra Pinball. I remember playing this on my Ants Gateway 2000, as well as our Packard Bell at home. We'll do the command post. Command post table up and running. Shoot back alley lanes to initiate bonus events. Good luck. Yeah, if we were in 640x480 mode, uh, there would be all kinds of crazy crap graphical glitches. It's hard to explain um, what it is, and I definitely can't explain why it does it. It's definitely bizarre. And it's such an obscure problem on an obscure game like this that Googling it ain't going to get you anywhere. <laughs> I, believe me, I've tried. What did I do? I got multi ball, looks like. Guess we gotta get it in that little thing there. Okay, I lost one of the balls. Alley, start next bonus loop. Okay. What do you say? Of all the pinball games I've played in my life, this is still my favorite. It's not perfect, but that's probably one of the reasons why I like it. Better than I thought I would. Quick 
Rip up the grass fast now. Okay, let's try to get up there. Oh, we did. I... Upper deck green lighted. Hit the ramp or elevator lane to enter upper level. Okay, I gotta do it again. Looks like. <sighs> Split some atoms. That doesn't sound dangerous at all. Aim for the back alley. Start next bonus loop. Super jacket. Okay, last one. Okay, game over. Did better than I thought it would. In my high score. So there you go, three ultra pinball. Now let's take the resolution back down. I could keep it at a high resolution at all times, but most of the games I play on this computer require 640 by 480, so it's not worth it. Next game. The Incredible Machine, one of the greatest computer games of all time, if you ask me. I was obsessed with this game growing up. Played it on both the Packard Bell at home and my aunt's gateway. Mostly on the Packard Bell, though. Of course, this computer now has a little bit of Packard Bell inside of it with the sound card. You know, we could sure use a little light in here. Ah, that's much better. Hi, I'm Professor Tim. Welcome to the Incredible Machine. <laughs> the Incredible Machine? Again, I haven't played it on this computer yet. Well, I have, but not on this particular Windows install. My name is not Bill Seven Y. And if you think otherwise, the then you're done. Okay, now the first puzzle, not the eight ball off the screen. There we go. Here. Put both bowling balls into the large column box in the center. I still say this game has one of the best soundtracks of all time for a computer game. They, they really went out of the way to make the, this game sound good, as well as play good. Here. Get all of the basketballs into the piped area. Oh, this song's especially good. Usually have a little trouble with this one. Okay, <laughs> wasn't supposed to happen. There we go. Here.
put the three bowling balls into the wicker basket. And of course, my favorite song in this game, Hayseed. <laughs> Okay, how about another game? This is a game that I remember, one, it was one of the first games I ever played on my Ants Gateway 2000 in the summer of 1995, I believe. And that would be the original Freddy Fish in the case of the missing kelp seeds. It's testing the CD-ROM drive speed, and even though it's loading from a hard drive, I've got that on that. I've got it on the 15 gig hard drive. Thanks for getting the flowers, Sam. That's your thing, Freddie. Bye, Freddy. Whoa! Music brings back memories. Hi, Snappy Turtle. Hi, Freddy. Here, Snappy. You look like you need some cheering up. For me? Thanks, Freddy. Have a nice day. Bye. This game is very aesthetically pleasing, if you ask me. Hi, Grandma Grouper. Here's a flower for you. Thank you, Freddy. What's wrong, Grandma Grouper? Someone took my treasure chest. Grandma! Your treasure chest that holds all the kelp seeds. Yes, Freddy. Look at the well, garden. Well, should have done a better it's job at dying. hiding the treasure chest. Something tells me she probably kept it out. Until we find my treasure chest, we have no food. I'll find your treasure chest, Grandma Grouper. Oh, thank you, Freddy. Here's my last peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich for your journey. Tasty. Good luck, Freddy. Gonna need it. I'll find your kelp seeds. Now we can begin. Hi, Luther. What are you doing? I'm trying to swim a loop de loop. Ow! Hey, Freddy. Bet you can't swim a loop de loop. It's easy. Wow! Let me try again. Look, Luther, a bottle. And there's a note inside. It says to find Grandma Grouper's treasure chest, go to the volcano. I'm going to be rich when I find that treasure. We need to find Grandma Grouper's treasure chest because that's where the kelp seeds are. If we don't find them soon, all the fish are going to die. I'll help you find them, Freddy. Usually if I find a message in a bottle, it usually tells me that I uh, smell money. I should really question things more. We found a purple sea urchin. <laughs> this part is funny. Gabby, Mommy's coming. Oh, I'm stuck. You still amuse me way too much as a kid. Oh, oh, oh. I'm giving it all I got, Captain. Oh. Sorry, Luther. Don't mention it. Gabby, my little guppy is stuck inside that cave. 
but I can't fit inside. Could you please find them? Yes, Mrs. Halibut. We'll help Gabby. Halibut. Freddy, Luther, I'm stuck under this How rock. Please help me. <gasps> I'm stuck. What are we going to do? How do we get Don't stuck worry, Gabby. Again, we her. just need to find a bigger board well, there was to drive the rock off ball. your fist. I, uh, I like all the uh, Freddy Fish games. There's five of them. But this first one, it, it, it's just much more special to me than the other four. They couldn't have made a better game than this. It's a wooden board. Yeah, we got a wooden, bo a wooden board so we can, uh, you, we can use it to, uh, hit the person upside the head who stole the treasure seeds. <laughs> Well, that's kind of violent. I'm still stuck. Please help me. All right. Do we have to? Okay. Luther, come help. Yay! Mommy! Gabby! My Gabby! Thank you both. You're, You're welcome, Mrs. Halibut. Please take this purple sea urchin for saving my Gabby. Thanks, Mrs. Halibut. Luther, we still need to find Grandma Grouper's kelp treasure. Hey, let's play a DOS game or two, starting with Tyrion, a game we tried to play in the uh, Carolina Flyer Jr. video, but the computer uh, wasn't going to have any of that mess, so let's see if it plays nicer on this computer. I grab his Black Hawk joystick. Epic Mega Games. They made so many good games. Go to episode one. Easy. Play next level. Or first level in this Good case. Luck. I'm sorry the camera decided not to focus anymore. Yeah, it's better. I like these uh, top-down uh, space shooters. My favorite being, being uh, flying tigers, how simple it is. This game is really good, though. And as you can see, DOS gaming on this computer does great. Also helps that it is a very, very era-appropriate computer for any kind of DOS game, just about. Anything that ru ru that is uh, that would ru run on a Pentium, that is. Danger. <laughs> I 
Nothing like a game where you get to blow stuff up. Okay, I just I mainly want to show this game off just for the awesome music. But here is uh, Secret of Monkey Island. Yeah, this is one of the most classic point-and-click adventure games ever made. It's music only. It uses uh, ad-lib support. I remember in the summer of 2013 beating this game, feeling so proud. <laughs> I do have mouse support in DOS. So let's walk into the uh, Scum Bar, which is a uh, playoff on the uh, engine this game was built upon, the Scum Engine. If you ever heard of Scum VM, well, that's where that name comes from. Oh, what a classy joint. Let's talk to the dog, because we're crazy enough to do that. Rough. <laughs> of course, it's a crummy commercial. <laughs> I 
I try to talk to my dog, but all, all he does is make me rub his belly. Okay, we're loaded back to Windows, so we can do a quick little canyon test before we uh, call it a day. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, happy Easter once again. Um, even though Easter this year for many of us is not what it usually is, I hope you still find um, um, peace and fun this Easter season. And until next time, this is Billy Cor saying stay, stay safe and, and signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.